These are the two wire cables that connect the IJB to the transmitter and transducer. How can you identify them? You cannot identify them by sight. They are identical. The use of a buzzer or a bell powered by a one and a half volt dry cell is the recommended way to identify wire pairs. In the process of identification, you will also verify continuity of the pair. The use of telephones, either sound or battery powered, is permissible to identify wires, but phones should not be used to check for continuity. Obtain radio contact with a coworker. Request that he short the transmitter wires at the transmitter. Attach the buzzer leads to each wire pair. One pair will operate the buzzer, indicating a closed circuit. This is a schematic representing the circuit you use to identify wire pairs and verify continuity. Ask the coworker to make and break the circuit to verify the identity of the pair. You can use a VOM in place of the buzzer. Put the VOM on R times 100. Attach the leads to the cables. One pair will indicate a closed circuit. As you identify the wire pairs, be sure to tag them. Throughout the loop, we will tag the wire pairs and cables as they are terminated. Check the wire pairs for shorts to ground. Put your VOM on R times 10K, or the meter's highest resistance range. Attach one VOM lead to ground. Then check each wire. The meter must indicate one megohm or greater resistance between any wire and ground. There must also be one megohm or greater resistance between the wire pairs. Check the multi-pair cable orange-white-green-white pairs for shorts to ground. and shorts between pairs. Terminate the two wire cable wires. Remove about two inches of overall insulation. Remove the foil tape. Notice the cable drain wire. The drain wire is attached to a length of 16 gauge wire. The 16 gauge wire is attached to an 8 gauge wire. The 8 gauge wire is crimped to the multi-pair cable shield. In this manner, all of the two wire cable shields are tied to the multi-pair cable shield. Tape the butt of the cable after you make the drain wire connection. Secure the two wire cables with lock stitch or tie wraps. Tag and terminate the wires. The black wires are positive. Attach the two wire cables to the transmitter and transducer. Remove two inches of cable insulation. Cut off the foil tape and the drain wire. 
Remove three-eighths of an inch of insulation from the wires. Tape the butt of the cable. Attach wire lugs or terminals to the conductors. Be sure you use the correct size crimping tool and wire lugs. Terminate the wires in the transmitter. Observe polarity. Black is positive. Red is negative. Terminate the wires in the transducer. Observe polarity. Make sure the cable butts are taped to prevent the drain wire from inadvertently shorting to ground. The only place the drains should ground is in the control center. Now work exercise number three in your workbook. The control center end of the multi-pair cable terminates in cubicle K1. On TB255-6. This is terminal cabinet cubicle K1. Can you locate TB255-6? If the terminal strips are not identified, you can use a terminal arrangement drawing to locate any terminal in the cubicle. This is the terminal arrangement for cabinet K1. Find TB255-6. This is the house end of the 25-pair cable. Does the cable tag correspond? Yes. It shows that the other end of the cable terminates at IJB 407, TB 255 6. We need the orange-white and green-white pairs. Verify that the signal paths are good between control center and field by using a buzzer. Or ohm meter. Attach one buzzer lead to ground. Select one of the wires, the orange wire, for example. From the wiring diagram, you can see that the orange wire should be the transmitter positive lead. Ask your coworker to short the transmitter positive lead to ground several times. The buzzer should sound, indicating continuity. This is the electrical path you should complete. This technique not only tests for continuity, but also verifies the signal path polarity. Test the remaining transmitter and transducer wires in a like manner. Suppose a multi-pair cable wire is shorted to ground or to another wire, or open. What do you do? You must inform your supervisor or the responsible engineer. He will assign you a different pair to use.
form the wire pairs. The wires terminate on terminals 1B and 1A. and 2C and 2D. Locate terminal 1A. It is in the first horizontal row, row 1, and the first vertical row, row A. Attach the appropriate type wire lug to the conductors. This particular lug is called a tab terminal. It is gold plated to prevent corrosion. Terminate the transmitter and transducer multi pair cable wires. Be sure you push the terminal tabs all the way into the terminal slot. The house to field wiring is now complete. It is good practice to mark installed and tested wires on the loop diagram by red lining the wires. Marking installed and tested wiring tells you exactly what you have done and what needs to be done to the loop. Now work exercise number four in your workbook.